You know, those vehicles that are often praised for their fuel efficiency and long-lasting engines. Specifically, that black puff of smoke you sometimes see them belching out. It's not just an eyesore, it's a significant environmental concern. That, my friends, is soot, and it's full of nasty stuff that's bad for our lungs and the environment. Soot particles are tiny but mighty in their ability to cause harm. Now, car manufacturers aren't evil. Well, most of them. They are aware of the pollution problem and are actively working to mitigate it. They know about this sooty problem and have come up with a clever solution, the Diesel Particulate Filter, or DPF for short. This device is a game changer in the automotive industry. Think of it as a big metal net that catches all that nasty soot before it escapes into the air we breathe. It traps the harmful particles, preventing them from polluting our atmosphere. These DPFs are now mandatory in many countries, and for good reason. Governments have recognized the importance of reducing air pollution and have implemented strict regulations. They play a crucial role in keeping our air clean and our lungs healthy. Cleaner air means a healthier population and a more sustainable environment for future generations. But like any piece of sophisticated engineering, they come with a price tag, and boy, can it be a hefty one. Maintenance and replacement of DPFs can be costly, but it's a small price to pay for cleaner air and better health. So, what exactly is this DPF contraption? Well, imagine a metal cylinder, kind of like a very robust exhaust pipe. Inside, it's not just hollow. Oh no, that would be too simple. Instead, it's packed with a honeycomb-like structure made of ceramic material. This honeycomb has lots of tiny channels or passages. The exhaust fumes from the engine are forced through these channels, and that's where the magic happens. The soot particles, being bigger than the gaps in the honeycomb, get trapped. It's a bit like trying to sieve sand through a tea strainer. The sand gets stuck, but the liquid passes through. In this case, the soot is the sand, and the exhaust gases are the liquid. Now, let's get a bit more technical, shall we? The walls of these honeycomb channels are coated with special materials, often things like aluminum oxide or silicon carbide. These materials aren't just there for decoration, they have a crucial job. They act like a catalyst, a bit like the helpful friend who sets up a blind date. They encourage a chemical reaction between the soot particles and the oxygen that's also present in the exhaust gases. This reaction is what we call oxidation. In simple terms, the soot burns off. But here's the catch. This burning doesn't happen at the same temperature as a roaring bonfire. It's more like a slow, controlled burn. And that's where things get a bit more complex. You see, if the DPF just kept trapping soot without ever getting rid of it, it would eventually get clogged up. Imagine stuffing cotton wool into your car's exhaust pipe. Not a good idea, is it? That's why DPFs have a clever trick up their sleeves. Regeneration. This is a process where the trapped soot is periodically burned off to keep the filter from clogging. There are two main types of regeneration, passive and active. Passive regeneration happens automatically when the engine is hot enough, usually during longer drives. Active regeneration, on the other hand, needs a little help from the car's engine management system. Active versus passive regeneration giving the burn a boost. In this section, we delve into the fascinating world of diesel particulate filters, or DPFs, and how they manage to keep your car running smoothly by dealing with soot. Passive regeneration is like letting your fireplace naturally burn away the logs. Just as a fire consumes wood over time, the DPF uses the heat from the engine to gradually burn off the soot particles that accumulate during normal driving. The heat from the engine is enough to gradually burn off the soot in the DPF. This process happens without any extra effort from the driver, making it a seamless part of your car's operation. But sometimes, especially for shorter trips, the engine doesn't get hot enough for passive regeneration to do its job properly. City driving with frequent stops and starts can prevent the engine from reaching the necessary temperature. That's when active regeneration steps in. This is a more deliberate process initiated by the car's computer system to ensure the DPF stays clean and functional. The car's computer senses that the DPF is getting a bit clogged and decides to take action. It monitors the soot levels and, when necessary, triggers active regeneration to prevent any performance issues. It injects extra fuel into the engine's exhaust stroke. 
This additional fuel increases the temperature in the exhaust system, which is crucial for burning off the accumulated soot. This raises the temperature in the DPF, creating a controlled burn that incinerates the accumulated soot. The process is designed to be efficient and effective, ensuring that the DPF remains clear and the engine runs smoothly. You might notice a few things happening when active regeneration kicks in. The engine might sound a bit different, and you might see some white smoke coming out of the exhaust. These are normal signs that the system is working as intended. The engine might sound a bit different, and you might see some white smoke coming out of the exhaust. This is a clear indication that the DPF is undergoing active regeneration, burning off the soot to keep the system clean. Don't worry, it's all part of the process. Active regeneration is a necessary function to maintain the health of your vehicle's exhaust system, ensuring longevity and optimal performance. So, the next time you notice these signs, you can drive with confidence knowing your car is taking care of itself. DPF Sensors – Keeping an Eye on Things Of course, all this regeneration business wouldn't be possible without a bit of monitoring. That's where DPF sensors come in. These little electronic spies are positioned at strategic points in the exhaust system. They measure things like the pressure difference across the DPF and the temperature of the exhaust gases. This information is constantly fed back to the car's computer, which uses it to determine when regeneration is needed. Think of them as the snitches of the exhaust system, always keeping tabs on what's going on and reporting back to the boss. Without these sensors, the DPF wouldn't stand a chance. It would be like driving blindfolded. Why DPFs cost a pretty penny? Precious metals and intricate designs. So, we've established that DPFs are pretty clever bits of kit. But as with most things in life, this cleverness comes at a price. And in the case of DPFs, that price can be eye-watering. Firstly, the materials themselves are expensive. We're talking about ceramic materials that can withstand extremely high temperatures, often coated with precious metals like platinum to act as catalysts. Then there's the manufacturing process. Creating those intricate honeycomb structures is no mean feat. It requires precision engineering and sophisticated techniques. And as we all know, precision and sophistication don't come cheap. The price of failure, clogged filters and engine trouble. When it comes to maintaining your vehicle, one of the most overlooked components is the diesel particulate filter or DPF. But the initial cost of the DPF is just the tip of the iceberg. These filters are designed to trap soot and other harmful particles from your exhaust, keeping your emissions cleaner. If a DPF fails, and they can, it's not a cheap fix. The cost of replacing a DPF can be quite high, often running into the thousands of dollars. Remember those precious metals and intricate designs? They are essential for the filter to function properly, but they also make it expensive to replace. Yeah, they don't come cheap to replace, and that's not all. The labor involved in replacing a DPF can also add significantly to the overall cost. A clogged or faulty DPF can cause all sorts of other problems for your car. It can lead to increased back pressure in the exhaust system, which can affect engine performance. It can restrict exhaust flow, leading to reduced engine power and fuel economy. You might notice your car struggling to accelerate or using more fuel than usual. In extreme cases, it can even cause serious engine damage. The increased back pressure can lead to overheating and damage to other engine components. So while that DPF might seem like a pain in the exhaust pipe, pun intended, it's there for a reason. It plays a crucial role in reducing harmful emissions and protecting your engine, and neglecting it can lead to a whole world of financial pain down the line. Regular maintenance and timely replacement of your DPF can save you from costly repairs and keep your car running smoothly. Maintaining your DPF Tips for a long and healthy life Now don't despair, there are things you can do to help your DPF live a long and healthy life. First and foremost, avoid short trips where possible. Remember, those passive regenerations need a good run to do their thing. Secondly, use the correct engine oil. Modern diesel engines require low ash oil, which helps to reduce the amount of soot produced in the first place. Finally, keep an eye out for any warning lights on your dashboard. If that DPF light starts flashing, don't ignore it. Get your car checked out by a mechanic as soon as possible. DPFs, 
A necessary evil for cleaner air? So there you have it, the DPF. A necessary evil for cleaner air? They might be expensive and complex, but there's no denying that they play a crucial role in reducing harmful diesel emissions. Like it or not, DPFs are here to stay. They are a testament to the constant battle between performance and environmental responsibility. And as technology continues to evolve, who knows what the future holds for these clever filters. Perhaps one day, we'll have DPFs that are as cheap as chips and last as long as a politician's promise. But until then, we'll just have to grin and bear the cost of cleaner air.